You do karate or something? I said, no, man, I do capoeira. I went to my car, got my flyers, and I gave it to all of them. And that same week, they came to my class to take a look at my class. I did not have to hit anybody. I had just to show that I could. Hey there, how's it going? This is episode 116 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to find the best stories from the best martial artists, like today's guest, Mestre Ephraim Silva. At Whistlekick, we make the world's best sparring gear, and here on Martial Arts Radio, we bring you the best martial arts podcast. I'd like to welcome you. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, the founder here at Whistlekick. And for the next hour or so, I'll also be your host for Martial Arts Radio. Thank you to the returning listeners, and hello and welcome to those of you checking us out for the first time. If you're new to the show or our great products, please check out our hats. Winter hats, summer hats, different colors and styles, with more being added all the time. You can find them at whistlekick.com, right along with our sparring gear, which is the core of what we offer. If you want the show notes, including photos and links to everything we talk about today with Mestre Efrain, you can find those at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you're not on the newsletter list, sign up. We send out exclusive content, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for the show. As a thank you for joining, we'll send you our top 10 tips for martial artists in exclusive podcast episodes. You can sign up for the newsletter at any of our websites. As with a number of our guests, it was from a news article that we first learned of Mestre Efrain Silva. Native to Brazil, Mestre Efrain has been living in Connecticut for quite a few years now and has been spreading capoeira throughout New England via his school. It took us some time to find a day to record, as he's very much in demand teaching seminars throughout the United States. It was worth the wait. Mr. Efrain talks of his early challenges in Brazil, his struggles to open a school here in the United States, and the positive changes he's had on his students. It's a powerful episode, and one that may leave you feeling inspired and, at times, overwhelmed. It certainly did for me. So enjoy. Mr. Efrain, hello. welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. It's good to have you here. You are our first capoeirista. Oh, well. On the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure we've had some people that have done capoeira on the show, but you are the first mystery we've had on. So this will be fun. You're going to give us some different answers and, and offer a different perspective than, than others. But why don't you tell us how you got started with capoeira? Okay. Um, I studied capoeira in Brazil. Uh, when I was 13 years old, I come from a family of 13 kids. Um, we are seven boys and six girls. And I usually tell this to my students when they ask. Um, and being one of the youngest, you know, and growing up in Brazil, I really had to learn to defend myself, especially against one of my brothers who was always trying, you know, to mess with me. So yeah. that's one of the reasons that I looked for capoeira. But I started to learn capoeira from one of my brothers who started a little before I did. So, but anyway, as I started to practice capoeira, I trained like a maniac. And always thinking that, no, when he comes, I'm not gonna, not gonna accept this anymore. This was all about my brother. And as, as soon as I started to get better, my brother would say to me, hey, don't think that I'm afraid of you, man. I'm gonna kick you behind with your capoeira and I'll say, come. He never touched me and I never had to fight my brother. So. I, capoeira actually allowed me to face my brother without fear of being bullied by him. And he never had the courage to actually do anything. So it was a great thing. That was the reason I actually started capoeira. But I, I fell in love with it, with the music aspect of it. I always loved gymnastics. I always loved to, you know, play tough. And capoeira gave me all this opportunity. And the dance part of it, is one of the things that I really, really connect. Because once I, I learned not to have to fight anybody, I, I developed the other side of it, which was the music aspect and the dance aspect of Capoeira. And that was my beginning of all. Yeah. That's great. So here we have you know, a very specific reason that you start martial arts to learn self-defense. Yeah. Uh, the same reason that so many of our guests, so many people out there start. And with the skills you learned came confidence and you didn't really, it sounds like you didn't have to use it, that he recognized that 
it wasn't a good idea for him to pick on you anymore. That's exactly what it is. I tell my kids, I work with kids all the time, <clears throat> and I tell them that learning martial arts, not so you can fight, is just people that do any type of work uh, where they develop self-confidence. It stops people that like to mess with other people from even coming near, near you. You know, this, the confidence, the, the, the empowering that you acquire by, by being in control of you, who you are and your, your ability to defend yourself really stops people from messing with you. So that's what happened. The, I learned and I never had to use it for any reason. Okay. So it was good. And, and that's the best. And that was. You know, one of the things that we've talked about on the show mm. is that we talk, in martial arts, we tend to talk a lot about self-defense, how to win a fight. We don't, even though so many of us have learned how to do this, we don't talk about the fact that we learn how to not get into a fight in the first place. Yeah. By having that confidence in your in your skills. So I think that's fantastic. I'm going to guess you've got some pretty good stories. Growing up in Brazil, <clears throat> learning capoeira, uh, you, you've, you're in the United States now. There's a story there. <clears throat> what, if, if I was to ask you for your best story around capoeira, what would it be? Well, like I said, you know, I knowing capoeira and, and loving it so much. I, I, in Brazil, I competed. I went through many different stages of my life thinking that, you know, I was a tough guy and I did I, I was a champion in the state, in the region, and the, uh, and the and the national state champion. And but I think the best experience for me in terms of of martial arts, being a martial artist, was over here in the United States. I came to America 27 years ago, and the first six months that I was here, I bought a brand new ford escort was my very first car ever i oh, i was in love with my car and i delivered newspaper at, in the morning uh in the middle of the night actually so coming back home um i was coming driving back home after delivered the newspaper <clears throat> and i was coming nice and slow in bridgeport connecticut and a guy was trying to pass me on the right side and he passed but there was a car parked not to hit the car parked, he hit my car. And he, he drove away. So without even thinking, I drove behind him because he hit my brand new car. I wanted him to do it, to pay. <clears throat> so as I was driving behind him, he stopped in a very you know, bad area in Bridgeport, which there are many. And I got out of the car, and there were three guys in the car. It was funny for me uh, now thinking about. So I didn't even think about fear or anything, what they were going to do to me. I just wanted my car to be paid. And I didn't even speak English enough to explain what I wanted. I just said, you got to pay, you got to pay, you got to pay. And they, one of them uh, was the tough guy, a short guy, wanted to push me. I said, look, man, don't touch me. So another car parked behind. There were five of them and a girl. And they were yelling and they didn't want to pay and they want to beat me up. I told the guy, if you touch me, you're not going to like me, man. So he pushed me. So there is a capoeira movement. I don't know if you train capoeira, you might know. It's called parafuso, which you kick one leg and the other leg goes over. It's like in a, in a, in a, in a turning, flying kick uh, over, over the guy's head, their, their head because they were in front of me. So I jumped and I kicked without touching them. And then I stopped my foot on the guy's face. I said, who wants to fight? They all ran from me. All of them. It was like, <laughs> you know, it was the funniest thinking about it. It was like, I said, who wants to fight me? So nobody wanted to fight me anymore after that. And the police came. There were cars all over because the neighbors heard all the conversation and stopped. <clears throat> and then the police came. I said, well, he hit my car on, on Main Street and he's here running away. So anyway, to make a long story short, they had to pay for my car. And the guy came to me, one of the guys, he says, hey, man, what is it that you do, dude? You do karate or something? I said, no, man, I do capoeira. I went to my car, got my flyers, and I gave it to all of them. And I made a little advertisement. And that same week, they came to my class to take a look at my class. So that was awesome for me. You know, that happened. I did not have to hit anybody. I had just to show that I could if I wanted to. So, wow, that's that's very much a sort of karate kid moment. If you if you've seen that, movie, of course you know, I did. You, you take you take your enemy and you and you turn him into your friend. Yes, no, but the funniest it, the funniest part of all this is my ex. Uh, 
now my ex-wife, now she was my girlfriend. And she always thought I was a coward because I never wanted to fight anybody. People want to say things, so okay, but they have your opinion. That's good. She says, I can't believe you. You you are a martial artist. Kick him. So I'm not going to kick anybody, baby. But she always wanted to say. And you see, many times she went with me to deliver a newspaper. And that was the only day she didn't. When I told her what happened, oh, she was so mad at me. I said, I can't believe I didn't see this. She always wanted to see me fighting. She was crazy. But uh, thank God I never had to fight anybody. So mm -hmm. that was my good story that I... It was a happy ending for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because nobody nobody really wins in a fight. No, no, nobody no. does. And th this is the beauty of my art form because it is most martial arts, You, it's a, it's a full contact all the time. So in order for you to really get it, you have to hit or get hit. Capoeira, I teach my students this. Now, this is just my point of view. Uh, I that's what I, I teach. I think capoeira as a martial art teaches teaches something beyond hitting. Is you being able to control your movement before you hit? Because to aim at someone in front of me and punch them and kick them, well, the probability that, that I'm going to hit them is very big. But being able to stop my foot before I do that is a completely different ball game. It requires a different kind of ability and. And that's what I think Capoeira teaches you, because it's too easy to hit, but it isn't. To, to, to stop your foot before you hit someone, you don't have to break someone's nose to say, look, man, I, I, I can. It's okay. Now, you want to continue? This is, this is your choice. Those guys didn't want to fight me. They didn't see if I could hit hard or not, but they knew that I could. So, and that's what, that's what I think Capoeira teaches. And that's what I teach to my students. It's great. Yeah. So other than Caballera, do you have any non-martial arts hobbies that you like? Uh, we just like to get to know you a little bit more. I, I dance, man. I love dancing. I love all, all kinds of dance. I love Brazilian dance. And every night I have a friend that I know he's actually going to stay with me because he's visiting from Brazil. Um, we sit down. He gets his cavaquinho, which is a like a, a mini guitar that play samba, I get my instruments, we sit, and we play music every night. That's what I love to do. Wow. Were you, did you love dance and music before you started Capoeira? Well, I'm, I'm Brazilian. Most Brazilians do love music and okay. dance. You know, we, we, okay. we grow up with this. And my life has always been around music. You know, I grew up in a church with my mom and daddy and my 12 brothers and sisters. And we had a choir in the church that all of us sang. My sister was the, the conductor of the choir. Every single one of us had a different voice in the choir that we were trying to sing. So my life has been around music. <clears throat> That's fantastic. Thank you. So obviously everyone's life has ups and downs. We have good days. We have bad days. Sometimes we have good <clears throat> weeks or years and... <clears throat> Unfortunately, sometimes we have bad weeks and years. Tell us about a time in your life that maybe wasn't so good and how your martial arts training helped you to overcome that time. Okay, so um, I think the, I, I, left, I left my house when I was 13 because I wanted to do well by, my, by myself. And Capoeira took me all over the world. And... Um, Moving from my my home to another another city, it was very difficult for me, and I, but I did it anyway. And the only time in my life that I didn't think I was going to do capoeira was when I was in the Air Force in Brazil. But I taught capoeira at the Air Force anyway. But the hardest thing that I can think of, um, even though I lived alone pretty much uh, without my family since I was 17, I think the hardest thing for me was when I decided... To, I left the Air Force. I opened a school. I had a lot of students in another another city, in the state of São Paulo, Brazil, and it was a lot of people. I had a lot of friends. I always had a lot of friends in my life. It was, but it was when I came to the United States. I think if it wasn't for, first of all, my sister because she supported me. But if it wasn't for my training with capoeira, the the understanding that I got through the art form, through living this art so deeply. 
I don't think I could have survived very well here because it was the hardest moment in my life was when I came to the U.S. Because, first of all, I didn't speak the language. I did not know anybody besides my sister and her family. And my biggest thing was that I knew I was going to do capoeira here no matter what, even though in Brazil I was, I was also a massage therapist. And everybody said to me, look, you don't speak the language. Nobody knows what capoeira is. And why don't you just do massage? You make more money. So it's not about the money. You know? I didn't come here for that. I am a, a capoeira teacher, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach. But nobody cares. Everybody said that. So I'm going to tell you this, man. I cried many times. I cried. I swore to God that I was going to leave. But I said, no, this is not, I'm not going to quit in this. You know, days I would get up, decided that my sister, you know, tomorrow I'm going to go back to Brazil. I don't have to be here. I don't need to do these jobs that I'm doing because I was delivering newspaper in the morning. I was cleaning three houses with my sister. And later on, I would paint apartments. And four times a week, I went to school to learn English because that was my goal. I said, if I leave in six months, if I don't take anything from here, I'll take at least the language. So I took it seriously. And but I never gave up the, 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 the intention of creating capoeira to be my only source of income. So while I was doing all other kinds of jobs, and many times very depressed, very feeling sorry for myself many times, you know, I, I would come out and say, you know what, man, you, 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 you take a look at capoeira, man. Take, take, a how, take a look at how the Africans survived so much suffering. And they, many of them, uh, triumphed through capoeira. And I said, no, wait, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit this, and I'm going to continue. And I opened capoeira school five times uh, in different towns, trying to get something going. And the only, the six times when when it, it, it got to work. And that was in New Haven when someone... Uh, said, you know what, there is this space under this church that you might be able to get some class going. And that's how I started. And to make a longer story short, <laughs> even though even though it was a lot of suffering, when I acquired what I wanted to do, which was teach capoeira, it was the biggest, biggest deal of my life. And then I taught capoeira in five different universities. And for the past 16 years, I've been teaching capoeira at Yale University. So... It doesn't really matter today uh, how much crying and sorry I felt and how much I missed everything that I had left behind. What matters to me today is that I got what I wanted just because I did not quit. And I can think up where for it. That's fantastic. What, you know, I felt like I was along that ride with you and, and you know, felt sad with you. What was that experience? What was that that moment with the sixth school you opened, the the point when you realized it was working. Well, the, what did that feel yeah, like? Thank you for asking. Uh, my uh, the, when I decided to quit, I said to my friend, that was a friend in Boston. He was there. He was in Boston three years before I came, and I said, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. This thing doesn't work. And 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 he says, no, man, you can do this. Look, try it one more time. So and then someone. Uh, you know, the, I was already starting to, to do a little work here and there with capoeira, teaching kids uh, in the schools. And I, w- I was trained by the state as a master teaching artist, uh, which allowed me to come into the schools to, this was a few years later, um, to integrate arts in the curriculum. Uh, in Connecticut, it's an amazing training for the, for the students. And, but anyway, so the sixth time when I opened the school, First of all, the reason that I could I could stand a little longer without having too many people was that the church allowed me to be there for very little money. So I didn't pay a lot of money, and I had a great space. They gave me all the freedom to do anything I wanted there. They really, really loved what I did with Capoeira, and they supported that. And thanks to this church, St. Paul and St. James Church, I, I was able to start something and continue powerfully, and it worked. When I left the church, I opened my own school, 
I have a 2,000 square feet beautiful studio that I in love with. And yeah, but I, I, I taught Capoeira at that church for about 14, 15 years. So, yeah, so yeah. It, was, it was an amazing opportunity for me, you know, and it worked. <clears throat> when you think back of all the people that you've trained with, <clears throat> have taught you Capoeira or, or other elements of martial arts, who has been the most important? I can't deny that was my capoeira master because even though he was a pain, um, as as I was I was thirteen. I'm going to tell you what he did. <clears throat> I didn't have money, you know. Coming from I, I lived in a very tiny house in a very bad neighborhood in the in the in São Paulo with fifteen people, and yeah, my mother couldn't pay for anything. First of all, she didn't want me wanted me to do it, but my father said, "No, let my boy do it," and so she let me do it. But many times I, I, I didn't have money to pay my master. So he would make a document <clears throat> with the price of the month and give it to me. And he says, look, sign. I said, mess, I can't come to train this month because I don't have all to pay. And I would, I would uh, shoe shine, I would sell lime, I would sell all kinds of things so I could get the money to pay for him. So, but I was at the school every day. Every day, I would sweep the floor. I would help him, you know, make Xerox of stuff. I always helped him. But I didn't do because of any other reason besides me loving to be there. And I loved him. You know, he was a master. And I looked up for him. And he was a mean guy to everybody, very tough to everybody. He was a martial artist in the time that if you don't beat up someone, nobody respects you. So that's, that was his approach to Capoeira, I had to fight, I had to fight, I had to. So I grew up with this. Um, and but what I wanted to say is that the influence that he had in my life was incredible because all those little things that he did, it made me sign a. a it's called promissoria. It's a promise that you are going to pay. So at the end of the month, I would get, pour all the money together and I would give the money to him to pay for it. And then he says, "No, that's okay." He would rip it off, throw in the garbage. He says, no, you already helped me. You swept the floor. You don't have to pay this month. But so, you know, you know, you don't have to pay, you got to pay. So it threw it out many times. He did that. So for me, it was nothing then. And many times I got mad because he was very rude to everybody. And, and at 17, I moved to another town and I, I disconnected from him for many years. But living, living my life as a Capoeira teacher, I got to experience the same thing that he experienced with me. And I was able many times, and I still am, to give the same opportunity for a lot of people in my life. Because people come to me, well, I want to train Capoeira and I don't have the money. I just remember what my master did for me, and I, I'm sorry, I, I get Yeah, that's okay. I think it's amazing that you're taking that example. I, I think, I don't know if if you can hear it in your <clears throat> words, but it sounds to me like even though your your mestre was was difficult was rough it sounds like he had a, a method he did uh, there was a reason that he did that and you know here in in the united states most of us don't live in an area that is very rough where it is very dangerous some of us do but i would guess that some of that method was to help prepare you it did to be safe yeah, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. I, I, I am a crying baby. Um, um, <laughs> so cool. But, okay, I, but what it is is that the, I remember these things as, as a big deal for me. You know, so many times my ex-wife, she was my part. She helped me a lot with my business at the time. Um, and so many times she says, you can't give these people for free. They have money. So, well, if they have money, if they are lying, I am not the one to judge. I know one thing. When I did not have how to pay, my master let me do it. I didn't stop because I didn't have money. So no, if it doesn't pay, someone else will. And that's okay. And in my entire life, I, I, I built my business and I'm a very successful artist. I, I, totally, I tell my two kids, you know, being successful means you being happy with the things that you do and how you do it and having lots of friends in your life. And I am successful because of it. And it doesn't matter to me whether someone is cheating and trying to, well, look, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to judge that because I don't know the reasons. But one thing I know for sure, 
the lessons that Master Trindad <clears throat> gave to me with those simple little gestures. It was a big deal for me. And, and many times I talk about, about him and, and, and the things that I remember as a kid. I am moved, I am touched, and I'm inspired by who he was for me. So years later, once I was in the United States, I realized how important he was in my life. So I reconnected with my master. I brought him to the United States many times. He stayed with me many months. I trained for, with him. I did so many things. We performed together. And my relationship with him transformed just because as a grown man, as a capoeira teacher, I really understand that who he was for me was a role model, someone that I really, really had to Thank for, and I did, and I, I am thankful that I have him in my life, you know. Now, well, I haven't seen him in a while because I haven't, he stopped Capoeira for a long time because he became a priest then. And he, now he's starting to come back because at his church, he's teaching Capoeira. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, so that was my story. I hope I, I answered your question. I talked too much. You did. <laughs> you did. No, no. This We want you to talk too much. There is no too much on this show. It's we want to hear about <clears throat> you and we want to hear your stories. Okay. And the longer you talk, the better the stories get. Okay. <laughs> that is that is that's what happens with almost everyone on this show and and I love it. Now you mentioned earlier about competition that you had participated in competition. Yeah. Could you tell us about that? Yes, well, the tell the truth I stop to think about now, I am not proud of it. Um because it was it was crazy. It was like it was just a, a man trying to prove that, oh, you know, I'm not afraid of anything. And, you know, I wasn't. I grew up in a bad neighborhood and like, kicking kicking and, and hitting and fighting was all I knew. So I, I did that without a problem. So, but the competition was like very rough. It was a full contact and had nothing to do, you know, when I think over about this stuff, had nothing to do with capoeira really because it was it was just two guys getting into the into the into the 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 harder we call harder which is the circle where capoeira happens and we would do a cartwheel that was the only capoeira thing and the rest was who can hit the other one faster to knock them out and people had broken arms broken nose broken anything and for just a matter you know, and I did this for, for a long time, for many, many years. And I would train for that. I would train to hit, to get hit. So when I hit, no, there'll be no problem. If I got hit, nobody was going to break me. That was the, 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 the stupidity. I don't know. I, I'm not proud of it, but that's what I did. Today, I don't do that anymore. Of course, I'm an old guy, <clears throat> but um. But if the, the competitions nowadays, they change the whole entire rules. Now they, they, they are conscious about if, if you hit someone and you, and, and, and you intentionally take blood from someone, you are completely disqualified. So the, the Confederation of Capoeira now have different rules. And that is, you can take it down, you can take the person down, you can you know, hold down, whatever it is that you can do, but it has to be with control without just um, being mean to each other, you know. It, but even, even, even though it is like this today, I still prefer staying away from competitions. I don't think Capoeira is all about that. And um, I don't preach that to my students, but I don't stop them from it if they want to do it. Because, it, again, it is part of the art form. It's a human tendency to want to compete with each other, with yourself. And I can't deny anybody because I've done that. So I do not advertise. I don't want to go for it. I don't go after it. I don't say this is the best thing ever. But if people want to do, it is an aspect of capoeira. And, and because capoeira englobes all that, I can't deny anybody from anything. If people want to just dance, okay, come, I'll teach you dance. I want to kick each other's butt, come here. <laughs> I want to do some flips, I can show you too. So whatever it is in capoeira, I am willing to teach, and however you want to fo focus your, your intention is only up to you. I tell my students that Capoeira was created for freedom, and it is that. So if it is freedom art, in a freedom art form, I can't really impose too much 
my beliefs on anyone. So I don't. Mm. That, that's that's how I, I, I look at it. Yeah. And, and, and also because I, dis, I decided I chose not to take suffering out of my life. So if there is an area that is really bothering me, and especially because Kapoor is all I do, I, I, I try not to suffer with anything. So if people want to, why am I going to do, going to fight them and try to prove? So I just allow people to be whatever they want to be and empower them the best way I can. That's, but I don't compete anymore. I don't advertise. I don't, I'm not, I'm not even so proud about it. <laughs> sure, sure. If you could train with anyone in any martial art that you have not, and they could be alive or dead, who would you want to train Bruce with? Bruce Lee. Okay, that was quick. Why? Uh, because <laughs> even though I never met him, I, I, you know, I, I admire his ability, not only, but it looks like I, even though... You, 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 what you know about him and about this, his sayings, he was a very empowered, empowered man who was willing to empower other people. And, and I think beyond movement, I think a master is someone who are willing and able to empower other people to become better than they are. And, and I, I don't know, I don't know him. I didn't know him. But I, for the little things that we see, it's like my, I, I take a class, you know, now I decided to really get certified as a massage therapist here 27 years after I, I decided to go to school and I am. And my teacher, my last Sunday in the class, he wrote a saying, I don't remember. I should have taken a note. I didn't, but he wrote a, a, a very empowering saying. And at the end of the saying, he said, Bruce Lee. <laughs> so I, I, I just thought that I just think that he was a very, very, wise man even though he seemed to be very young for it but he was a very wise man if i had an opportunity i would choose him and here we are more than 40 years after his death and he still has such a strong influence on people that not just in the martial arts but you were at a massage therapy class and, and that quote comes exactly up. It has so. nothing to do with martial arts powerful very how about movies? Do you like martial arts movies? Uh, I, I, do you have a favorite? I don't. I don't watch no? TV so much. I don't, I don't. I have a TV in my house here, but it's not even connected to cable. The kids uh, watch some stuff. I watch movies once in a while. I like action movies, but uh, no, there is no like uh, one specific. You know, I always liked Steve Seagal. Yeah. I always like I liked his movies because I think he was real martial artist. Um, but um, <clears throat> yeah, if I were to choose a movie, I would prefer his movies, you know. Sure. <laughs> and he had some absolutely incredible movies. Oh, and he did. Of course, uh, people pick on him a lot now. He, he's in in some ways he's become a little controversial in the martial arts world. But I don't think anyone can deny the appeal of his early movies. So, yeah, we we've talked about him often on this show. Yeah, no, I don't know much about him. I just, I, I this is about movies. This is how it is. Right? I either like the movie or I don't. I, I either like to the point where I tell you, you to watch, or I don't care for it. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, they, are, they are the ones make the money. I don't want to suffer about discussing things that I can have no power over. So that's just my take on it. <laughs> what are your goals? For your martial arts school and your your training, you know, what? Why do you keep training? Why do you keep teaching? Well, look, I'm going to tell you why I do what I do. So when I opened my 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 sixth school that was under the church, there was a student that was always there. You know, he had dreads, very long dreads. He had pursing everywhere on his face, on his nose, on the eyebrow, everywhere. He was he looked like a very crazy kind of guy, right? Because it, it was, I wasn't used to those um, styles of, of people in my life growing up in Brazil. But he was there. And he was very focused, very trained. You know, when I decided to get this, the, this space, he helped me paint. He was there. He was another Ephraim in my life. I was an Ephraim for my master. He was an Ephraim for me. And mm. 
So anyway, so he trained capoeira. He was a very difficult guy to learn. <clears throat> I would leave him doing a movement. By the time I came back, he would be doing something else, completely off balance. He was so un uncoordinated. And so anyway, years later, he was training capoeira with me. Years later, he said to me, Master, um, I want to thank you. You know, I never actually got to thank you. I said, for what? I said, well, for, for having capoeira here, for teaching me. Because if it wasn't for capoeira, I think I would be lost in drugs. Uh, I didn't even know he did drugs. For me, that was how he was. And he says, yeah, I would be completely lost in drugs because that's what I was doing all the time. And, you know, he met a girl in my class. They got married. They had two kids. You know, they're divorced now many years later. But, but he was the first student that was an American student to become a, to become a capoeira teacher under me. So he is my oldest student. Um, and I'm proud. He was here last night with us. And I'm proud uh, that he said that to me. And the reasons that I do what I do, they like to travel, to do capoeira, teach capoeira, because I never know who I am touching who is going to be transformed just because of who I am th through capoeira. So my love for capoeira is not just because oh, I like to kick and show off my movements, even though I'm an older guy. It's because I consciously know that it will transform someone's life at some point. If it is just one, anywhere I go, well, it's better than none. And I will do capoeira until I die. Wow, that's... That is that is all powerful, but that that last statement that you will do capoeira until you die. That's, I think some people make that claim. They say that they, something they love, they will do until they die. But you can, there's a little bit of doubt in their voice. I have no doubt. Neither do I. From what I just heard, no, no, you you will. One day you will be doing capoeira, and the next day you will fall over, and you will yeah. not. Yeah. And and I I think that that is is. Um, very it's powerful thank you it's powerful and, and you clearly you I mean who knows how many lives you've touched but i mean you have such a concrete example of that one man that you quite possibly saved his life well based on what he says i capoeira did and my being in his life and you know he yeah i am proud and honored that's i can mm. tell you So now's your chance to tell us a little bit about you, your school. If someone is interested in having you come teach, I know you travel and teach. So if they were interested in contacting you for that, or they were interested in coming to your classes, well, tell us about that. Yeah, I have I have a great studio and um, on in New Haven on 1175 State Street, um, and we have class every night um, from seven. 7.30 to 8.30 and sometimes until 9 o'clock on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We, we, through this art form, through Capoeira, we teach all the aspects of it, like I already mentioned, the music, the dance, and we focus on, on the music very much because you know, nobody can dance with bad music. So I teach my students very much about the, all the percussion uh, aspects of Capoeira. And yeah, so the classes are every night and anybody can register. It's all levels beginners and advanced and tuesdays and thursdays we have an amazing program for children uh, they start at four years old and until 12 and i have a great class they play music the kids do very well actually sometimes i tell the adults you guys should come to my kids class to learn a little bit from the kids because you guys can't do anything <laughs> you know making fun of them uh but it's true they're doing very very well because the kids don't have any fear <clears throat> and you tell them to do something, they go for it. And so the, pro, the, the kids' program is Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5.30 until 6.15 and 6.30 until 7.15. We also have samba classes, you know, taught by Thelma Ladeira, who's my friend and works with me for the last five, six years. Great girls, all. The only Brazilians over there is just me and Thelma. Everybody else are not Brazilian, but they all dance samba very well. If you see my students playing capoeira, you know, at some point, Brazilians thought capoeira was, you know, if you're not Brazilian, you don't have the swing, which is big lie. Capoeira is the world. The world owns it now. And 
the Americans are kicking behind with it. If there was a capoeira competition today against Brazil in the United States, I doubt Brazilians would, you know, get too much ahead of the game. They're incredible. So anyway, so this is for anybody at any age. Anybody can train capoeira on their own limits, you know. And yeah, we are always there. We're always available. I travel teaching, but most of the times it's the weekends. And I do have teachers that teach the class when I'm not around. So it's for anybody. Sure. And of course, we'll have a link to your website so people can find out if anybody's in the Connecticut area and or, or traveling to the Connecticut area and they'd like to look you up and maybe come take some classes. Beautiful. We can do that. Beautiful. Sure. Well, as we wrap up, one more final question. If you could give some advice to everyone listening, what would you say? If I could give advice, which I won't, I'm just going to say <laughs> that I, an opportunity to get yourself in any type of martial arts, any type of movement will, will keep you young forever. People that are not uh, using excuses to justify why they don't do it, it is nothing but excuse. If anybody at any moment want throughout the day to stand up and do 20 minutes of any exercise, it will enhance the lifestyle, the life quality. They will live a better life. So what I would like to say is like, stop using the word try as an excuse. People that want to try to do things have absolutely no intention of doing it because people that want to do it, they do it, they do it, they do it, they fail, they do it, they fail, they do it until they get it. I am the live example of it. I told you I opened the school six times. So no trying, get up and do something so you can live a healthy life. That's what I would like to say. Thank you for listening to episode 116 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And thank you to Mestre Efrain. Over at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, you can find links to the history of Capoeira, some videos, photos, and contact information from Mestre Efrain. You can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. And our username is always Whistlekick. If you want to know what's going on behind the scenes of the show, check out our sort of secret Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, Behind the Scenes. Yes, we're great at coming up with creative names. If you know someone that would be a great interview for the show, please fill out the form at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Or if you want to shoot us a message with a suggestion for a Thursday show or some other feedback, there's a place to do that as well. If you like the show, make sure you're subscribing. You know we're always asking for reviews because they help spread the word of the show and push us up in the rankings. If you like what we're doing, this is the best way to help. And remember the products you can find at whistlekick.com, like our hats. If you're a school owner or team coach, you should check out wholesale.whistlekick.com for our discounted wholesale program. We'll be back soon, but until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.